The Brunali Armada swarmed over the human world New Terra, a thousand warships strong, intent on finally crushing the resistance of the primitive humans. General Sirefather looked on smugly from the bridge of his dreadnought, savoring the moment of triumph. His fleet maneuvered into bombardment position, the ship's weapons locking onto cities and defensive emplacements below. Just as Sirefather opened his mouth to give the order to open fire, an immense spatial distortion erupted nearby. The Brunali crew gaped in disbelief as a colossal human warship emerged from hyperspace, easily dwarfing their largest vessels. Sleek, deadly, and bristling with weapons, the human flagship bore the name Indomitable along its armored flank. On the Indomitable's bridge, Admiral Brian Hall stood resolute, his icy blue eyes fixed on the alien armada. His bridge crew worked their stations with calm focus, hands flying over control interfaces, a testament to humanity's steely determination, even when facing overwhelming odds. The Indomitable's weapon systems hummed to life, immensely powerful cannons and missile batteries swiveling to lock onto the Brunali fleet. Sirefather felt his earlier arrogance evaporate, replaced by a sickening dread. He barked panicked orders to retreat, and the alien ships scattered into disarray, engines flaring as they fled before the might of the human warship. But even as the immediate threat receded, both Admiral Hall and General Sirefather knew this was only the beginning. The Indomitable's arrival had just shattered the Brunali's perception of human inferiority, setting the stage for a reckoning that would soon shake the very foundations of the galaxy. In the Grand Chamber of the Brunali High Council, a rancorous debate raged. High Chancellor Zoraxtel pounded his fist on the polished stone table, his voice booming. We must strike back immediately. This indomitable is clearly a prototype, a risky move by the humans. We still hold the advantage in numbers and firepower. Across the table, Counselor Ventari held up a slender hand, her eyes narrowed. And what if you're wrong, Zoraxtel? What if this ship represents a leap in human capabilities that we have gravely underestimated? We must gather intelligence before committing to a course of action. As the debate spiraled, a young Brunali officer named Varnox slipped out of the chamber, his heart pounding. The war had took a toll on him, as had the arrogance of his superiors. In secret, he had established contact with Sarah Novak, a human resistance operative on New Terra. With swift, silent steps, Varnox navigated the corridors of the council building, making his way to a clandestine meeting with his unlikely ally. Light years away on Earth, Dr. Elena Pavlova watched footage of the Indomitable's triumph, her eyes glistening with unshed tears. The ship was her brainchild, the product of years of tireless work and sacrifice. She remembered the hidden shipyard where the Indomitable had been constructed, remembered the day Brunali raiders had struck and stolen her husband's life. The pain of that loss, the weight of her responsibility, settled on her shoulders like a mantle. On the bridge of the Indomitable, Admiral Brian Hall studied a holographic display of new Terra and the surrounding systems. We need to move quickly, he said, his voice gruff. Dispatch envoys to the resistance leaders on New Terra and the other key colonies. We need to present a united front. His executive officer, Commander Olivia Prescott, nodded crisply. And what of Governor Lyons on New Terra? Intelligence suggests he may not be amenable to following Earth's lead. Hall's eyebrows furrowed. Then we'll just have to persuade him. One way or another, humanity must stand together. Or we'll fall divided. In a darkened alley on New Terra, Varnox and Sarah Novak met in tense silence. They exchanged information quickly, urgently, knowing that discovery would mean death for Varnox and an end to any hope of peace. There's a Brunali weapons depot on the moon of Kethlar, Varnox said, his voice low. If we could sabotage it, it would buy your people time to marshal their forces. Sarah's eyes gleamed in the dim light. It's risky, but it could work. I'll need to run it by my superiors, but I think this could be the break we need. As they parted ways, slipping back into the shadows, both Varnox and Sarah felt a flicker of hope amid the rising tensions and the looming specter of all-out war. The Indomitable had changed the game, but the true struggle was only just beginning, a struggle that would be waged not just in the cold void of space, 
but in the hearts and minds of those on both sides who dared to dream of a different future. The Indomitable tore through the void, its mighty engines propelling it towards the besieged mining colony of Zephyrus Prime. On the bridge, Admiral Hall stood grimly at the tactical display, watching the blinking icon that represented Governor Lyon's fleet. The two human forces, so recently at odds, now raced together to confront the Brunali battle group. Incoming transmission, Admiral, the communications officer reported. It's encrypted, source unknown. Hall frowned. Put it through. The view screen flickered, resolving into the image of a Brunali male, his features sharp and his eyes haunted. Admiral Hall, I am Kazarin, a scientist in service to the Brunali Empire. I have information vital to your survival, but I fear my message may already be too late. The Brunali have set a trap at Zephyrus Prime, and they have deployed a terrible new weapon. Hall's blood ran cold. He leaned forward, his voice urgent. What kind of weapon? A biological agent designed to target human physiology. If you proceed to Zephyrus Prime, you may be dooming not just your fleet, but your entire species. As the transmission ended, Hall turned to his executive officer, his fist tight. Inform Governor Lyons. We proceed to Zephyrus Prime, but with extreme caution, and ready our biocontainment protocols. Light years away, on the Brunali-occupied moon of Kethlar, Varnox and Sarah crept through the dimly lit corridors of the weapons depot. The hum of machinery and the acrid scent of chemicals filled the air. There, Varnox whispered, pointing to a heavily reinforced door. That's the bioweapons lab. Sarah nodded grimly, her hand tightening on her blaster. Then that's our target. They moved swiftly, Varnox's stolen access codes granting them entry. Inside the lab, rows of containment units held vials of a sickly green liquid. Sarah's eyes widened in horror. Is that? The bioweapon, Varnox confirmed, his voice tight. We have to destroy it, all of it. As they set the charges, alarms began to blare. Brunali guards burst into the lab, weapons drawn. Varnox and Sarah dove for cover, blaster fire filling the air. They fought their way out, the explosions of the charges shaking the facility behind them. In the cold depths of space, the Indomitable and the new Terran fleet emerged from hyperspace to find themselves surrounded by Brunali warships. At the center of the enemy formation loomed a massive dreadnought, the flagship of General Sirefather himself. The battle was joined, the void lit by the fierce exchange of fire. The Indomitable's advanced shields held, but the ship shuddered under the onslaught. Hull breaches tore through decks. Consoles exploded in showers of sparks, and crewmen fell as the inertial dampeners struggled to compensate. Admiral Hall gripped the arms of his command chair, his face grim. Target Sirefather's ship. We need to end this now. As the Indomitable's guns roared, a team of elite Marines led by Commander Aiden Reeves boarded a shuttle. Their mission, to infiltrate the Brunali flagship and capture General Sirefather. On Earth, Dr. Elena Pavlova stared at the message from Kaziarin, her heart pounding. The Brunali defector claimed to have vital information about the bioweapon, but he would only share it in person. She had to find a way to bring him to Earth without alerting the Brunali or risking the Indomitable's mission. She thought of her husband, lost to the Brunali's cruelty, and steeled her grit. She would find a way at any expense. As Commander Reeves and his team fought their way onto Sirefather's bridge, the general's words echoed through the comm channels, a chilling ultimatum. The bioweapon had already been deployed on human colonies. Surrender the indomitable, or watch humanity die. Admiral Hall closed his eyes, the weight of the choice before him threatening to crush his soul. The indomitable was more than a ship. It was a symbol of hope, a beacon in the darkness of war but against the lives of millions, could any symbol, any hope, stand? On Kethlar, Varnox and Sarah watched the weapons depot burn. The bioweapon turned to ash. But they knew their fight was just the beginning. The Brunali would not stop, not until humanity was broken or the stars themselves burned out. And so, as the Indomitable and the Brunali flagship locked in a deadly embrace, as Dr. Pavlova raced against time to secure Kazarin's secrets, as the very fate of humanity hung in the balance, the battle for the future raged on, 
unending and unrelenting, in the hearts and minds of those who dared to defy the darkness. Admiral Hall's mind focused as he stared at the viewscreen, Sirefather's ultimatum ringing in his ears. The weight of countless human lives pressed down on him, each heartbeat a reminder of the devastating power of the Brunali bioweapon. We have no choice, Hall said, his voice low. Open a channel to Sirefather. The Brunali general's face appeared, triumph gleaming in his eyes. Hall forced his expression to remain neutral as he spoke. We surrender the indomitable in exchange for the antidote's location. Sirefather's mandibles twitched in what passed for a smile among his species. A wise decision, human. Stand down your weapons and prepare to be boarded. As the comm channel closed, Hall turned to his executive officer. You know what to do, he murmured. She nodded, her fingers dancing across her console, sending encrypted burst transmissions to key personnel throughout the ship. On the lower decks of the Indomitable, Lieutenant Jacob Hayes and his team readied themselves. They watched through viewports as Brunali shuttles approached, carrying Commander Reeves and his Marines to take Hall into custody. Move out, Hayes ordered, his voice barely above a whisper. The specialized infiltration team slipped through maintenance corridors and access shafts, making their way toward the Indomitable's airlock. As Reeves led a grim-faced Hall off the bridge in restraints, Hayes and his team boarded a nondescript maintenance craft. They launched under the cover of the commotion, their small vessel lost in the sea of Brunali ships surrounding the Indomitable. On Earth, Dr. Elena Pavlova sat before a bank of monitors, her eyes darting between streams of data. Kaza Aaron stood behind her, his alien features taut with tension. The infiltration team is away, Pavlova reported, initiating phase two. Her fingers flew across the keyboard, launching a carefully crafted virus into the Brunali command network. Warning klaxons began to blare throughout the enemy fleet, but by then it was too late. Aboard Sirefather's dreadnought, Hall allowed himself to be marched onto the bridge. The Brunali general loomed before him, savoring his moment of victory. At last, Sirefather gloated, the might of humanity laid low. Hall said nothing, but his eyes flicked to a nearby display. A faint smile tugged at the corner of his mouth as he saw the first signs of the virus taking hold. Deep within the bowels of the dreadnought, Hayes and his team moved with swift precision. They encountered scattered resistance, Brunali crew members confused by the malfunctioning systems around them. We're approaching the lab, Hayes reported over his secure comm. Resistance is minimal. Back on Earth, Pavlova nodded. Understood. Be advised, the virus is causing widespread disruption. You should have a clear path, but expect that to change rapidly. As the infiltration team battled their way closer to their objective, chaos erupted across the Brunali fleet. Ship systems flickered and died. Communication channels dissolved into static, and carefully coordinated battle formations began to drift apart. On the bridge of the dreadnought, Sirefather whirled as alarms blared. What is happening? he roared. A junior officer stammered out a response. Our systems are under attack, sir. We're losing control of... The rest of his words were lost as the ship's lights flickered and died. In the moment of darkness, Hall struck. He drove his shoulder into Sirefather's midsection, sending them both crashing to the deck. As they grappled, the indomitable burst from its hiding place behind a nearby moon, weapons blazing to life. The human ship tore through the disorganized Brunali fleet, clearing a path for the new Terran forces to join the fray. In the Dreadnought's lab, Hayes and his team secured the bioweapon, data, and antidote. Package acquired, he reported, moving to extraction point. Pavlova's voice crackled over the comm. Confirmed. The Indomitable is engaging. All teams, prepare for immediate extraction. As the battle raged around them, with human ships pressing their sudden advantage, Hall and Sirefather continued their desperate struggle on the bridge. The Brunali general's face was a mask of fury as he realized the true nature of the trap he had walked into. You'll pay for this deception, Sirefather snarled, his claws raking across Hall's face. The admiral grimaced, tasting blood. Maybe, he grunted, but not today. With a mighty heave, Hall threw Sirefather off him. He scrambled to his feet, racing for the exit as alarms blared 
and the ship shuddered under the Indomitable's assault. As Hall fought his way through the corridors, seeking to rendezvous with Hayes and his team, the full scope of the human plan unfolded across the battlefield. The Brunali fleet, robbed of its coordination and technological edge, found itself outmaneuvered and outgunned by the reinvigorated human forces. In the command center on New Terra, Governor Lyons watched the battle unfold with growing disbelief. His own attack force, primed to strike at what he had believed to be Hall's betrayal, now hung back uncertainly. Sir, his aide said hesitantly, we're receiving new orders from Earth. They're requesting our assistance in mopping up the Brunali stragglers. Lyons gritted his teeth, torn between his anger at being kept in the dark and his grudging admiration for the audacity of Hall's gambit. Finally, he nodded. Very well. All ships, engage the enemy. Let's finish this. As the new Terran forces joined the fray, the tide of battle shifted decisively. Brunali ships, still reeling from the effects of Pavlova's virus, found themselves caught in a deadly crossfire. Aboard the Indomitable, now under the command of Commander Olivia Prescott, the mood was one of grim satisfaction. We've located Admiral Hall's beacon, the tactical officer reported. He's with Lieutenant Hayes's team, making their way to the extraction point. Prescott nodded. Good. Maintain suppressing fire on the dreadnought. We're not leaving without them. As the human forces pressed their advantage, the reality of their situation began to dawn on the Brunali crew. What had seemed like certain victory mere hours ago had transformed into a devastating rout. In the depths of the dreadnought, Hall and Hayes' team fought their way toward salvation. The precious bioweapon data clutched tightly in their grasp. Behind them, Sirefather's enraged roars echoed through the corridors, a reminder that their escape was far from assured. The battle for Zephyrus Prime raged on, its outcome still uncertain. But in this moment, as human ingenuity and perseverance reasserted themselves against overwhelming odds, the first glimmers of hope began to shine through the darkness of war. The aftermath of Zephyrus Prime left no time for celebration. Admiral Hall stood on the bridge of the Indomitable, surveying the tactical display. Korath IV glowed red, a tantalizing target rich with Brunali industrial capacity. Lieutenant Rodriguez, Hall said, your infiltration teams are cleared for deployment. Neutralize those defensive systems. Rodriguez nodded, her face set with willpower. We'll get it done, sir. As Rodriguez's shuttle slipped away from the Indomitable, Hall turned to Captain Esposito. Prepare the fleet for full assault. The moment those defenses go down, I want every gun blazing. On Caratha 4's surface, Rodriguez and her teams moved through shadows and alleyways. The Brunali garrison patrolled in force, but human resistance fighters provided crucial intelligence and support. There, whispered Rodriguez, pointing to a squat building overflowing with antenna. Primary control node for the orbital defense grid. Her team worked swiftly, planting explosives and hacking into Brunali systems. Similar scenes played out across the planet as other infiltration squads targeted key installations. In orbit, the Indomitable's crew waited with anxious anticipation. Suddenly, the tactical display lit up as Karath IV's defenses flickered and died. Now, Hall ordered. The Indomitable's guns roared to life, joined by its support craft. Brunali ships scrambled to respond, but found themselves outmatched and outmaneuvered. On the ground, resistance fighters emerged from hiding, striking at confused Brunali troops. Rodriguez led her team in assaulting the garrison's command center, exploiting the chaos. As Korath IV fell, reports flooded in of uprisings on other occupied worlds. The Brunali High Command reeled, struggling to contain the spreading rebellion. On the Brunali homeworld, Chancellor Zor Axtel pounded his fist on the table. Crush them, he demanded. Show no mercy to these human vermin. But Ventari, leader of the moderate faction, saw opportunity in the chaos. He made discreet contact with Governor Lyons, probing for a diplomatic solution. Meanwhile, on Earth, Dr. Pavlova received a cryptic message. Umbra seeks alliance, advanced tech on offer. Interested? Pavlova's brow furrowed as she considered the implications. She typed a cautious reply. Proof required. Name your terms. As covert operations intensified on both sides, 
Admiral Hall received news of his promotion to Marshal. He stood before the crew of the Indomitable, addressing them one last time as their commander. Captain Esposito will lead you now, he said. Your next target, Tau Seti Six. Strike hard, strike fast, and may fortune favor the bold. The Indomitable's assault on Tau Seti Six proved brutal. Esposito gritted his teeth as damage reports flooded in, casualties mounting by the minute. But then, a breakthrough, courtesy of intelligence from the mysterious Umbra. There, Esposito shouted. That weakness in their defensive line, punch through now. The Indomitable surged forward, its guns blazing. Brunali ships scattered before its advance, their formation shattered. As news of the victory spread, Chancellor Zoraxtel found his support crumbling. In a secret bunker, he gathered his most loyal followers. We have one chance, he hissed. Kill their leaders before they can steal our victory. Prepare the assassins. The attempt on Marshall Hall's life came swiftly and without warning. Only the timely intervention of Esposito in the Indomitable saved him from certain death. As Hall recovered in the medbay, Ventari seized control on the Brunali homeworld. He immediately opened channels to human representatives, pushing for a ceasefire. The war had entered a new phase, its outcome far from certain. But for the first time in years, hope blossomed in human hearts across the galaxy. The Indomitable's mess hall buzzed with tension as Marshal Hall addressed his officers. We've achieved a ceasefire, but the real challenge begins now. He tapped a holographic display, revealing a space station orbiting a neutral world. This is where we'll negotiate a permanent peace treaty with the moderate Brunali faction. Dr. Pavlova stepped forward, her face etched with concern. We must remain vigilant. Chancellor Zoraxtel and his loyalists are still at large. As the briefing concluded, Captain Esposito pulled Hall aside. Sir, we've detected unusual energy signatures near the station. It could be nothing, but... Hall nodded grimly. Keep the Indomitable on high alert. I want every sensor focused on that station. Aboard the neutral station, human and Brunali delegations filed into the conference chamber. Marshal Hall locked eyes with Counselor Ventari, the Brunali moderate leader. Years of hostility hung between them like a heavy curtain. Let us hope, Ventari rumbled, that today marks the beginning of a new era. As negotiations began, Dr. Pavlova received an encrypted message on her personal device. She slipped away, finding a secluded corner to read its contents. Her eyes widened as she decrypted the message from Umbra. In a shadowy maintenance corridor, Pavlova met with a hooded figure. You claim to be part of an ancient civilization, she whispered. The figure nodded, revealing an alien face unlike any Pavlova had seen before. We are the preservers. We've watched humanity's struggle against Brunali oppression with growing concern. The preserver handed Pavlova a small pulsing device. This contains schematics for shield upgrades and an experimental AI system called Overseer. Use them wisely. Back in the conference chamber, tensions flared as both sides argued over border demarcations and reparations. Suddenly, an aide burst in, face pale with shock. Tanaris, ow, oh, it's gone, he stammered. Some kind of bioweapon, millions dead. The room erupted in chaos. Ventari's eyes blazed with fury. Zoraxtel, he snarled. This madness must end. Hall's comm link chirped. It was Esposito. Sir, we're detecting a Typhon warhead on the station. We're moving to intercept, but... Evacuate the civilians, Hall ordered, drawing his sidearm. I'm leading the defense personally. As panic spread through the station, Sarah Novak and Varnox prepared for their covert mission. The former Brunali soldier's hands shook as he checked his gear. We'll find Zoraxtel, Novak assured him, and we'll make him pay for Tanaris. Aboard the Indomitable, Esposito barked orders as the ship raced towards the station. Engineering, I want those new shields online now. Tactical, prepare to deploy Overseer. The experimental AI came to life, its holographic avatar materializing on the bridge. Combat systems online, it intoned, analyzing threat matrix. As the Indomitable closed in, Hall and a hastily assembled security team swept through the station's corridors. The sounds of gunfire echoed in the distance. 
We're running out of time, Hall growled into his comm link. Esposito, where's that backup? The captain's voice crackled back, tinged with static. ETA three minutes, sir. Overseers deployed and... Wait, what the hell? The Indomitable shuddered as it engaged Zorakstel's terrorist ships. Overseer's avatar flickered, its eyes glowing with an eerie light. New combat solutions available, the AI announced. Shall I proceed? Esposito hesitated for a split second, then nodded. Do it. As the battle raged both on the station and in space, the fate of humanity and the Brunali hung in the balance. The path to peace had never been more treacherous, nor the cost of failure more catastrophic. The station rocked violently as Zoraxtel's forces unleashed their assault. Marshall Hall's security team fought tooth and nail through the corridors, desperately racing against time to neutralize the Typhon warhead. Esposito, status report! Hall barked into his comm link, ducking as plasma fire seared the bulkhead above him. Indomitable engaging hostiles, sir, Esposito's voice crackled back. Overseers running tactical simulations. We've got a shot at this, but it's going to be close. Hall grunted an acknowledgement, then signaled his team forward. They rounded a corner and found themselves face to face with a squad of Brunali extremists guarding the entrance to the warhead's containment chamber. Take them down, Hall ordered, his own weapon blazing. The firefight was brutal and swift. When the smoke cleared, Hall's team stood victorious, but precious seconds had ticked away. Inside the chamber, the Typhon device pulsed with malevolent energy. Hall's explosives expert worked furiously to disarm it while the others provided cover. Sir? The technician's voice wavered. I can't stop it. The countdown's about to hit zero. Hall's mind raced. Esposito, we need that solution now. Aboard the Indomitable, Overseer's holographic avatar flickered to life. New parameters identified, initiating countermeasure protocol. A beam of concentrated energy lanced out from the Indomitable, enveloping the station in a shimmering field. The Typhon warhead detonated, but its destructive force dissipated harmlessly against the protective barrier. Hall sagged against the wall allowing himself a moment of relief before keying his comm link. Well done, Captain. You've just saved millions of lives. As the immediate crisis passed, Hall's expression hardened. All units, this is Marshal Hall. Our top priority now is the capture of Zoraxtel. I want every inch of this station searched. That bastard doesn't leave here alive. While Hall coordinated the manhunt, Sarah Novak and Varnox pursued a different lead. Their stolen Brunali shuttle screamed through the void towards a desolate asteroid belt. There? Varnox growled, pointing at a barely visible structure nestled within a crater. That's where he'll be. Novak nodded grimly, bringing their craft in for a stealthy landing. As they approached the entrance to the abandoned mining facility, the air itself seemed to crackle with tension. Inside, they found a hive of frantic activity. Zoraxel's remaining loyalists scrambled to prep two massive missiles, each bearing the distinctive markings of Typhon warheads. We have to stop those launches, Novak whispered. Varnox's alien features twisted into what passed for a smile. Then let's introduce some chaos. They struck like lightning, their stealth training allowing them to pick off sentries before the alarm could be raised. But their luck couldn't hold forever. A shout went up and suddenly the air was thick with plasma bolts and shrapnel. Novak and Varnox fought their way towards the launch controls, leaving a trail of destruction in their wake. Zor Axtel himself appeared on a balcony overlooking the bay, his eyes blazing with fanatical fury. Launch now, he shrieked. Cleanse the galaxy of human filth. Varnox roared a challenge, drawing Zor Axtel's fire while Novak made a desperate dash for the control panel. Her fingers flew across the alien interface, input the abort codes Varnox had provided. The missiles shuddered, their engines sputtering out mere seconds before ignition. Zor Axtel howled in rage and frustration. It's over, Novak called out, her weapon trained on the Brunali leader. But Zor Axtel was not finished. With a snarl, he thumped his hand onto a hidden panel. Emergency bulkheads slammed down, cutting him off from Novak and Varnox's line of fire. By the time they breached the barriers, Zoraxtel had vanished. Damn it, Novak spat. 
she keyed her comm link. Marshall Hall, Zor Axtel's in the wind, but we've secured two more Typhon warheads. Back on the station, negotiations resumed with a newfound urgency. Counselor Ventari, his mandibles clicking with agitation, turned to the assembled human delegation. In light of these unconscionable acts, he intoned, the Brunali Conclave commits to full transparency regarding our bioweapon research. All data will be turned over to your scientists immediately. Dr. Pavlova stepped forward, her eyes gleaming with hardly restrained excitement. We accept your offer, Counselor. Together we can work to neutralize these threats and build a lasting peace. As the diplomats hammered out the details, newly promoted General Esposito stood on the bridge of the Indomitable, surveying the tactical display of human space. Red indicators blinked across the map, highlighting the remaining pockets of Brunali resistance. Helm, he ordered, set course for the new Carthage system. It's time to show the galaxy what this ship can really do. The Indomitable's engines flared to life, propelling humanity's mightiest vessel towards its next great challenge. As stars streaked past the viewports, Esposito allowed himself a small smile. The tide of war had turned, and a new era of human ascendancy was about to begin. The Indomitable's triumph was short-lived. As the massive ship approached the new Carthage system, a blinding flash erupted from its starboard side. Alarms blared across the bridge as Esposito gripped his command chair. Report, he barked. Multiple hull breaches, sir, the tactical officer shouted over the chaos. We're detecting energy signatures consistent with Preserver Tech. Before Esposito could respond, another explosion rocked the ship. The view screen flickered, revealing a swarm of sleek vessels emerging from hyperspace. Their design was unlike anything human or Brunali. Evasive maneuvers, Esposito ordered, but it was too late. The unknown ships unleashed a barrage that tore through the indomitable shields like paper. As system after system failed, Esposito gave the order no captain ever wants to give. All hands, abandon ship. Escape pods jettisoned from the dying vessel, scattering into the void as the pride of humanity's fleet crumbled into a twisted hulk of metal and fire. On Earth, Marshall Hall watched the disaster unfold through a secure transmission. His fist clenched as he turned to Dr. Pavlova. How soon can we implement the preserver upgrades on our remaining ships? Pavlova's eyes were hollow with exhaustion. Weeks at best, but without the indomitable as a test bed. Hall nodded grimly. Then we work faster. Humanity needs a new symbol of hope. As they spoke, a priority message flashed across Hall's terminal. It was from Counselor Ventari. Marshal, the Brunali leader's mandibles clicked with agitation. We have a situation. A faction calling itself Umbra has issued demands to both our peoples. Hall's brow furrowed. What kind of demands? Complete subjugation, Venatari replied. They claim to be the true heirs of Preserver technology. They want everything we've gleaned from their artifacts. Before Hall could respond, the room's holographic projector flickered to life. A figure materialized, humanoid but clearly alien. Its skin rippled with bioluminescent patterns, and its eyes glowed with an unnatural light. I am Umbrask, the being intoned. Supreme leader of Umbra, your species have meddled with forces beyond your comprehension. Submit to our rule or face extinction. Hall's teeth clenched. We don't respond well to threats. Umbrask's eyes narrowed. Then you will learn the price of defiance. The hologram vanished. Moments later, reports flooded in from across human and Brunali space. Gravitational anomalies were destabilizing planetary orbits, rendering entire worlds uninhabitable in a matter of hours. In the chaos that followed, Hall found himself in an unlikely alliance. He stood shoulder to shoulder with Ventari, addressing a joint session of human and Brunali leadership. We face an enemy that threatens both our peoples, Hall declared. Our only hope lies in unity. Ventari nodded solemnly. Together, we will show these Umbra the true meaning of defiance. As the Allied fleet assembled, the newly christened Defiance took its place at the vanguard. On its bridge, a recovering Esposito settled into the captain's chair. The sting of the Indomitable's loss still burned. 
but a fierce purpose gleamed in his eyes. All ships prepare for hyperspace jump, he ordered. We make our stand at the Kepler Nexus. The fleet vanished in a burst of light, hurtling towards a confrontation that would determine the fate of two civilizations, and perhaps the entire galaxy. The Kepler Nexus burned. Debris from Umbras' shattered fleet drifted silently through the void, a graveyard of twisted metal and frozen corpses. Aboard the Defiance, Captain Esposito surveyed the carnage with grim satisfaction. Status report, he barked. Allied casualties at 37%, sir, his exo replied. But Umbrask's forces are decimated. We've won. Esposito nodded, allowing himself a moment of relief before the weight of responsibility settled back onto his shoulders. Signal Marshal Hall. Tell him the Nexus is secure. On Earth, Hall received the news with measured optimism. He turned to Counselor Ventari, the Brunali's mandibles clicking softly. It seems our alliance has borne fruit, Hall said. Ventari's compound eyes gleamed. Indeed, but we must remain vigilant. The preservers may have other factions waiting to strike. Their conversation was interrupted by a priority alert. A technician's voice crackled over the comm system, tinged with awe and fear. Sir, we're detecting a massive energy signature. It's like nothing we've ever seen before. Hall's brow furrowed. Show me. The holographic display flickered to life, revealing a colossal vessel emerging from hyperspace. Its design was alien, yet somehow familiar, as if the preserver technology they'd encountered was but a pale imitation of this craft's true potential. A transmission cut through the stunned silence, and a figure materialized before them. Towering and regal, with iridescent skin and eyes that seemed to hold the wisdom of eons, the being spoke. I am Supreme Commander Krell of the Ixor Empire. Your recent entanglements have drawn our attention. Hall squared his shoulders, meeting Krell's gaze. We've defended ourselves against aggression. Nothing more. Krell's expression shifted. Was it amusement? Contempt? You've meddled with forces beyond your comprehension. The preservers were our creation, tasked with guiding species such as yours. They have failed in their duty. Ventari stepped forward, mandibles flaring. Failed? They sought to subjugate us. A regrettable deviation from their original purpose, Krell replied smoothly. But now, order must be restored. You will surrender all preserver technology to us immediately. Hall's eyes narrowed. And if we refuse? Krell's form seemed to grow, filling the room with an oppressive presence. Then you will face the full might of the Ixor Empire. Choose wisely. The transmission cut off, leaving Hall and Ventari in stunned silence. They exchanged a look, years of mistrust between their species evaporating in the face of this new threat. We've come too far to submit now, Hall growled. Ventari nodded, his alien features set with dedication. Agreed. We forge our own path, free from the machinations of these ancients. Hall keyed his comlink. All commands, this is Marshal Hall. We are now at DEFCON 1. Prepare for full-scale invasion. Across human and Brunali space, klaxons blared as ships scrambled to defensive positions. On the defiance, Esposito received the transmission with a mixture of dread and anticipation. Helm, set course for Earth, he ordered. We make our stand in the Sol system. As the Defiance and its accompanying fleet entered hyperspace, Dr. Pavlova huddled with her research team in a secure facility beneath the Martian surface. Surrounded by scavenged preserver artifacts, she felt the weight of billions of lives on her shoulders. We're missing something, she muttered, poring over schematics. There's a pattern here, a key to unlocking their true power. A junior researcher approached, tablet in hand. Doctor, I've found something in the Brunali data. It mentions an Ixor superweapon capable of disabling entire fleets without destroying them. Pavlova's eyes widened. Show me. As she delved into the data, the pieces began to fall into place. But time was running out. In orbit around Neptune, the first wave of Ixor ships tore through the outer system's meager defenses. Admiral Chen watched in horror as outpost after outpost went dark. Fall back to Mars, she ordered, her voice tight 
We can't hold them here. On Earth, Hall convened an emergency meeting of military and scientific leaders. The atmosphere was tense, the stakes unimaginable. Options, he demanded. General Esposito, newly arrived from the Defiance, stepped forward. We've consolidated our remaining ships around Earth and Mars. The Brunali have pledged their full support. But even with our combined forces... He didn't need to finish the sentence. They were outgunned, outmatched by an enemy whose technology bordered on magic. Dr. Pavlova's hologram flickered to life, her expression a mixture of excitement and trepidation. We may have a chance. The Ixor superweapon, we think we can replicate it. But the energy requirements are astronomical, and the technology is unstable. Hall's eyes hardened. How long? Days at most, but we'll need a test platform, something large enough to channel the energy. All eyes turned to Esposito. He nodded grimly. Defiance. We'll make the modifications. As the meeting adjourned, Hall pulled Esposito aside. I need you to make contact with Varnox. His Brunali resistance cells may be our ace in the hole. Esposito raised an eyebrow. Can we trust them? Hall's expression was grim. We don't have a choice. As Earth's defenses mobilized and Pavlova's team worked feverishly to unlock the superweapon's secrets, the Ixor fleet advanced inexorably toward the heart of human space. The final battle for survival loomed, with the fate of two civilizations hanging in the balance. The cosmic shockwave rippled through space, its devastating energy tearing through the Ixor fleet. Admiral Chen watched from the bridge of her flagship as the enemy vessels went dark their formidable weaponry rendered useless by the modified preserver technology. Status report, she commanded, her voice steady despite the adrenaline coursing through her veins. Ixor fleet neutralized, Admiral, her tactical officer responded. But our own ships have taken heavy damage. We're detecting multiple hull breaches and system failures across the Allied fleet. Chen nodded grimly. Signal all vessels. We're returning to Earth. As the battered human Brunali Armada limped back to their homeworld, the true cost of their victory became apparent. Colonies lay in ruins, entire planets rendered uninhabitable by the Ixor's merciless assault. The Defiance, once humanity's proudest achievement, drifted as a lifeless husk, its sacrifice etched into the void of space. On Earth, Marshall Hall stood before a sea of faces, human and Brunali alike. The memorial service stretched as far as the eye could see, a somber testament to the lives lost in their struggle for freedom. We gather here today, Hall began, his voice carrying across the silent crowd, to honor those who gave everything in defense of our future. His gaze fell upon the empty podium beside him, adorned with General Esposito's medals and insignia. The absence spoke louder than any words could. Later, as the sun dipped below the horizon, Hall found himself in a sprawling junkyard on the outskirts of New Washington. Twisted metal and shattered hull plating stretched in every direction, the remains of the defiance. He ran his hand along a blackened shard, feeling the weight of all they had endured. Your sacrifice won't be forgotten, he whispered to the wreckage. Across the solar system, on the newly established Kepler Research Station, Dr. Pavlova pored over schematics and alien artifacts. The joint human-Brunali facility hummed with activity as scientists from both species worked side by side, unraveling the secrets of preserver technology. Dr. Pavlova, a young Brunali researcher, chittered, mandibles clicking with excitement. We've isolated a new energy signature in the Ixor debris field. Pavlova nodded, but her eyes remained distant. Umbrask's final transmission played on loop in her mind. Beware the shadows between stars. They hunger for all life. On the Brunali homeworld, now freed from the shackles of their former regime, Counselor Ventari addressed the planetary assembly. We stand at a crossroads, she declared, her compound eyes scanning the gathered representatives. Our past was defined by conquest and subjugation, but our future, our shared future with humanity, must be built on cooperation and mutual respect. Murmurs rippled through the chamber. Some nodded in agreement, while others chittered in discontent. The path forward would not be easy, but it was necessary. As the galactic community took its first tentative steps towards recovery, 
Varnox stood amidst the scaffolding and construction drones of New Terra. The human colony, once raised by Brunali weapons, now symbolized the potential for reconciliation. Sarah Novak approached, her hand finding his. It's really happening, she said, wonder in her voice as she surveyed the rebuilding efforts. Varnox's mandibles twitched in what humans had come to recognize as a smile. A new beginning, he agreed. But even as hope blossomed, darkness gathered at the edges of known space. In shadowed corridors and encrypted transmissions, whispers spread of Umbrask's followers regrouping, amassing weapons capable of extinguishing entire species. And beyond, in the cosmic gulfs between galaxies, ancient entities stirred. Their consciousnesses spanned eons. Their forms defied comprehension. They sensed the ripples of change emanating from a small spiral arm, where insignificant creatures dared to challenge the natural order. Inexorably, inevitably, they turned their attention towards the Milky Way. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel. And for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.